Time for The Pet Show with America's favorite pet expert, Warren Eckstein. Warren is the author of How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want and How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. He's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. And now, Warren Eckstein. Is your terrier in need of some therapy? Does your Abyssinian require some analysis? Are your cockers ready for my couch? Well, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and want to understand your dog's and cat's behavior as well as they understand yours, stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for the Pet Show, America's first and only real pet psychology, training, behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show. So hop up on my couch. Ah, bring those furry little buddies with you, folks, because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show, the place where we absolutely, positively, never a doubt about it, love, adore, and as I stress every single week, respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if you'd like to join me on the Evergrowing Pet Show family, and we keep growing, expanding, and growing and expanding, if you want to find out why your dog doesn't get along with the dog next door, why your cat looks at the little box and says, use it yourself, your dog is, is jumping up on people, your cat is scratching your favorite chair, if you have a question about your pet, you have come to the right place. I will help you cope with your pets more than likely. Help your pets cope with you guys. It's not easy living with people, believe me. Uh, also, by the way, if you happen to be a new listener to the show or a radio listener, just a reminder that everyone, everyone that calls into the show and does in fact get through to me live on the air will be getting an amazing gift for their best friend. Now, it's not for you, it's for your dog or cat. Many of the items I give away are 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 bucks and more. So everyone who calls in and gets through to me live will be getting one of these fabulous gifts for their best friend. You don't have to tell them it's from me. You can say you bought it yourself if you want to tell your, your dogs and cats a little fib. That's okay with me. The phone number here at the Pet Show for all your questions and comments. I'd love to hear some stories about dogs and cats you guys have adopted. I'll tell you why coming up a little bit later. I met these two amazing amazing, amazing 17-year-old dogs yesterday. I'll talk about them a little bit later. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-KRLA. Or if you're a numbers person like me, that's 866-870-5752, 870 KRLA, that is the number. Plenty of time for your calls. As I said, lots of great stuff to give away on today's show as well. Uh, I'll give you a list of what I'm giving away in just a little while. Uh, again, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I do this every week, and I repeat myself every week, and I'm going to do it again. I come up with some great, important topics that I think you guys need to know. And I'm going to try to get them all in today. But as you guys are aware of, that I usually don't have time to get all of the topics in because your phone calls, your questions, your stories are always the priority here on the Pet Show. So if we get to them, great. If not, we'll put them off till next week. Or you can check out my website, thepetshow.com. Again, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me tell you what I like to share with you guys on today's show. You know, Look around, just look around at all of the toys your dog or cat has. I bet you he has plenty of toys all over the floor, on top of the bed, on the furniture. Did you know those very toys your pets are playing with could make them and you very, very sick? Coming up, how dirty toys can make you and your pets sell. Interesting story, something that I'm not even I mean, I'm aware of it, but something that I'm kind of a little lazy about too. So we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on today's show. Also coming up, is your dog or cat acting a little strange? They might not have a physical illness, but they still need help. There are a few psychological disorders your pet might be suffering from. And yes, they are treatable. That's what this show is all about. You know, as an animal behaviorist, animal psychologist, whatever you want to call me, over the years, I had the opportunity of working with thousands and thousands of dogs and cats. And when I first started, there was no one else doing what I do in the country. I mean, just, I feel like an ancient man, but the bottom line is there was no one doing it. There were trainers and there were some people that studied behavior, but no one was really into the analytical aspect of, of why they behave in a certain way. And, and that's something I took on and people thought I was crazy. When I went on the Tonight Show and I talked about dogs and cats being uh, depressed or anxious or, or suffering from anxiety or any other problems, people kind of looked at me like I was crazy. Come on, dogs and cats, how can they possibly have psychological problems? Well, you know what? 35 years later, 
over 35 years, I hate to admit it, but over 35 years later, the rest of the world is joining Warren, saying, you know what? Dogs and cats have been living with us for so long that perhaps the psychological anxieties and problems we have went from one end of the leash to the other. We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later, and I'll talk about some of the psychological problems that our pets may be suffering from, plus this coming up on today's show as well. A lot of people say to me, Warren, what about those service dogs? I see them on the airplanes. I see them on the streets. I see them on trains. I see them in the stores. Are they really, really, really happy? Do they like their jobs or are they being forced to work at very little pay? We'll talk about that. Just to give you a little hint, I think they kind of like it. Also coming up, after all of the pet deaths and mishaps on airlines, today I'm going to share with you some alternative ways to travel with your dogs and cats that are a whole lot safer. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. As I said, lots of great pet stuff to give away. So if your pet is jumping, digging, scratching your favorite chair, your cat forgot about the litter box, your dog suffering with separation, anxiety, your favorite cat is depressed, hates other dogs, chases anything that moves, take your dog for a nice stroll down the block and he turns into Cujo when he sees another dog. Or if your dog believes that if it moves, it's his job to hump it, give me a call. That's what the show again is all about, helping you understand your pet's behavior, helping them understand your behavior, and hopefully making it all work for both of you. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through Okay, before I get to the phone calls here, and lots of great stuff to give away, <clears throat> I spent yesterday afternoon with a good friend of mine. She has an incredible restaurant in Santa Monica called uh, Lula's Cocina. Did I say that right, Cocina? Lula's Casino. It's a great Mexican restaurant. I have to ask Alex how to pronounce all my, my Spanish words. Even though I took five years of Spanish, five years of Spanish in high school, all I can say is hola, Paco. That's about the only thing I remember. Anyway... She's an incredible woman, has an incredible restaurant. Lula is an incredible restaurant. She made me a great meal and a lot of other people a great meal as well. But when I was there, I was speaking to my friend Charlotte, who runs a great, uh, great organization. We'll talk about that later. Um, and there was, I started out holding one little chihuahua named Liz after Elizabeth Taylor, 17 years old. They rescued it, 17 years old, blind, pretty much deaf. And when they first got the dog, no one could hold the dog. The dog was just shaking and scared and afraid. But Charlotte had been working with him, and now the dog's really mellow. And I guess, I guess he sat on my lap for about an hour and a half or two hours. Just an amazing one. And then another dog came in that also needed a home. Another 17-year-old chihuahua, believe it or not. Also blind and deaf. I had both of them on my lap. If you go to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash the pet show, uh, you'll see a photo of them there. And, and both of these chihuahuas, you know, what kind of chance would a 17-year-old chihuahua that's blind and deaf stand? Well, no chance at all getting adopted. However, with the right people, with my good friend Charlotte and Jerry working on them, they will get a home. Amazing animals. Uh, and the reason I bring that up for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, there's an, a major event coming up in July that they're going to have. You get to meet these two dogs and a lot of other dogs. And in the future, I'll talk more about that. I got my tickets yesterday for this event in July. Hopefully, when I talk about it, you guys will get your tickets. We'll say hello. We'll shake hands. We'll talk. And you'll get to meet some wonderful animals. But anyway, if you want to see the pictures of Liz and the other dog's name was Bingo. Two 17-year-old chihuahuas. I mean, it was just like, you know, some people say, oh, it's de not depressing because these dogs are going to know how much they're loved when they cross the Rainbow Bridge. It was just such an incredible day yesterday. So anyway, I'll talk more about them in the future. I'll give you guys more information on the event coming up. Jerry will join me on the show sometime in July to give you more information as well. But I got to tell you, um, just seeing and, and holding these two dogs and just feeling how comfortable they felt, being blind and deaf and 17 years old, but how they adapted and how comfortable they were with me and other people and with each other, just an amazing story. That's why every dog or cat really needs a chance, every single one of them. Here's the bottom line, okay? I'm gonna ask all of your questions today. So if you're one of my, my, my listeners, uh, my friends uh, that have adopted an older dog, an older cat, please give me a call. Tell me a quick story about them, because every time someone calls me that's adopted an older dog or cat from a shelter, I find that other listeners say, you know what, maybe, just maybe, that's the right thing to do. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Uh, we're going to talk all about pets. That's what we do every week, helping you cope with yours, helping your pets cope with you, and understanding their behavior. That's really important. A lot of people say, well, I want to correct my dog from this. I want to correct my cat from doing that. Correct, correct, correct. How about taking some time to figure out why your dog or cat is behaving a certain way, and then, then maybe taking a good, long look in your own mirror and figure out, is it really a dog or cat's problem, 
or is it really a human problem? We'll talk about that. Plenty of time for your calls. 866-870-KRLA. Let me tell you what I've given away on today's show. On today's show, I will be giving away my own Hugs and Kisses Vitamin Mineral Supplement Treats. One for dogs, one for cats. Lucy Pet Formus Life Pet Food. Nothing better on the market for your dogs and cats. Kids and Pet Stain and Odor Remover. Those T-shirts. I'm telling you, we can't keep in stock. If you want one, you better order it now. I designed them myself. It says none of my friends walk upright. I'll also be giving away copies of my behavior books, either dog or cat. Cat's Incredible Cat Litter, Author Suit Gold, Mushroom Max, and some brand new pot products from Nature Vet. Hemp Seed Oil for Allergy, Calming, Immune, and Joint. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I'll answer all your questions, but I'd like to hear from some people that may have adopted an older dog or an older cat. And tell me a little story about them. What were they like when you got them? Were they depressed? Were they anxious? Were they upset? And how long did it take you to, to kind of transfer that, that anxiety into to love, comfort, and tranquility? Give me a call. Let me know, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Hey, James, Vicki, Anita, don't go anywhere. I'm going to get to your calls. Let me take a break here so I can get right through this. Is that okay? I'll take a break here. We'll get right through the break, and I'll get right to your questions. Great time to call me, by the way. I know it's difficult to get through sometimes, 866-870-KRLA. And if you have friends that may not be in my listening area right now, anywhere in the world, they can listen to the show. They can actually watch me doing the show on Facebook because I'm doing it live. And that address is facebook.com slash Warren Pet facebook.com slash Warren Pet. I'll be broadcasting for the next two hours. You can watch it on video. You can listen to me broadcast. Just a reminder that when I go to commercial break, you guys will hear music when you're on Facebook. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. And we are back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. The question of the day is, do you believe that animals can have psychological problems or do I need therapy? Do you believe that animals can have psychological problems? Give me a call. 866-870-KRLA. Let me get right to the phone lines. We're going to take it right down in order. Jay, James, Vicky, Anita, and Larry. Jay in Panama, uh, Panorama City. Welcome to the Pet Show. Hey there. I wanted to thank you for the last time I called. You sent me out some kitty litter from, uh, what's it, Cats? Catastic or Cats and Cats Incredible from Lucy Pet Products. Yeah, Cats incredible. Yeah, my problem is I don't know where to find it to buy it. Uh, there's plenty of places you can find it. it's available in a lot of independent pet stores. If not, what you can do is you can get it on Amazon now as well. So it's available on Amazon. Oh, uh, well, would it be available at like Red Barn? Or? Uh, I, yeah, it's probably available at Red Barn. Yes, yeah, Cats Incredible should be available at Red Barn. Yeah, I noticed it, it cut down quite a bit on the odor. Oh, it's an amazing product. I mean, you, would, you would hear me talking about it if it wasn't an amazing product. So it really is. So you can either try it at Red Barn. If for some reason they're out of it or don't have it, you can get it right on Amazon.com or go to LucyPetProducts.com as well. Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm, yes, I'm renting them. Uh, I'm, uh, my cat, I don't know, it doesn't look like he's using the litter box, so he must be going somewhere. And I'm sure my house smells. I just can't smell it anymore. I got a nose blind. Okay, so here's what you need to do. If you think your cat's going in the house, what you need to do is at night turn off all the lights in your house, go to either a lighting store or a pet store, and get one of those black lights. You know the black lights we all had in the 70s and 80s looking at those posters sure. at Farrell Force? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, the bottom line is what you do is you take that black light and any yeah, urine. CSI. There you go. <laughs> that, exactly what you need to do. CSI. There's got to be a term. I'm trying to think of the words that I can say on the air to use it. But anyway, what you need to do is go all around the house, find any areas where she's gone. Then what I want you to do is clean it up with a product called. Well, um, it's, it's actually a he, and I got to tell you, but he, he, I when I was little, I had two cats. The other cat passed away, uh, and so I had to keep him in the bathroom a lot uh, to avoid you know interaction because he was just like like a month old, and the other cat would have probably killed him. And so uh, he got used to being in the bathroom and peeing in the sink. So I guess he watches us when we use the bathroom, and so he's like, "Oh, well, here's mine." I don't know. Why, unless you see him stand, unless you see him standing up when he goes, don't worry about him watching you too much, okay, Jay? <laughs> Listen <laughs> well, to me. Started using the actual pot, but the thing is, is when he pees in the sink, it's just horrendous. Yeah, but you can stop him from peeing in the sink. You want to know how to stop him from peeing in the sink? 
I don't. The wife does. Okay, well, her, well, well, you don't. I, I guess you don't. On and it's done. I guess you don't mind. But listen to me carefully. Whenever you leave that room, leave two or three inches of water in the sink, and it'll stop going in there. Oh. Uh. Oh, okay. I am a genius, Jay. I really am a genius. That's what you do. Now, I noticed from my computer, I want to run out of time, but I noticed from my computer that you also can get the feral cat to use the litter box a little bit more. So you have feral cats outside. Is that it? Or is this cat inside? Uh, I, well, the cat, I, he's, he's always, he's never outside. Okay, great. He's an inside cat. Super. Yeah, but I have three feral cats that hang around outside looking at him on the inside. And, uh, so he gets a little agitated now. He's, he's going on, he's almost a year old. All right, so, but in and other words, I, is, is, your, is your question, do you want to get the feral cats to use a litter box? Is that your question for me? Yeah. Okay, not a, a piece of cake. Here's what you do. Get a couple of litter boxes, and where the feral cats hang out, go over to those areas, not where they sleep or they eat, but another area where they hang out. Take some of the grass and dirt, put the grass and dirt in the litter box. No litter, just the grass and dirt in the litter box. They'll probably start to use it because it's going to smell like an area they want to really claim. Then once they start using the litter box, you can start adding a little bit of that cat's incredible cat litter, just a little bit of it, gradually taking away the dirt, gradually adding more of the cat litter, and you can make the transition transition very easy. Many of my listeners had feral cats that were outdoors. Now we're indoor cats using that transitional method I just suggested. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, Jay, how long ago did I send you the cat litter? Uh, uh, say that again? How long ago was it when I sent you the cat litter? How long ago? Yeah. Uh, two months. Ago. Okay, good. You know what? To, can we, we say, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put you on hold. i got to move on. I'm going to put you on hold. And what I'm going to send you is, in general, I don't do this, but you sound like a great guy with all these feral cats. I'm going to send you a coupon um, for some um, kids and pets stain and odor remover. Great product on the market. And again, thank you. I'm telling you, Lucy Pets Cat's Incredible Cat Litter. I've been hearing over and over and over again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 866-870-CAROLY. Let's go to James in Los Angeles. Hey, James. James, welcome to the pet show. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, yeah, I talk, uh, talk slowly. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, to answer your question about adopting older pets, when my, uh, when my last cat died, and last about three weeks, I, I just had to get some more cats. So when I went to the shelter, I said, I don't want a kitten because everybody wants a kitten, and they'll get adopted right away. I want an adult, mature cat that's less likely to be adopted. So I got two cats that have been there for about a year and a half. Wow. Wow. What incredible story. And, and they may, they probably turn out to be the most incredible pet you ever had. Uh, I still miss my own cat. Oh, you do, but in other words, that's the thing to do. Just think of, just think of the legacy you left. You had this other yeah, cat yeah. cross the Rainbow Bridge. You love this cat. He's no longer with you, but the legacy of that cat will always be there because you went right back to a shelter and rescued two more honoring the memory of the cat that crossed that bridge for what an incredible thing to do james and and i bet you're really enjoying them too oh man i just love animals yeah so, hey, listen, i was at an event last night it was kind of like this night club where they have uh you know uh bands come and play and it gets really loud i have to wear earplugs and there's a lady there in a wheelchair and she had a companion animal with her uh you know beautiful uh golden labrador yeah I just felt really, really bad for the dog about it steering in his ears and how loud it must have been. What do you think about that? Is that like... I mean, an appropriate situation. Well, you know, it's an interesting, it's an inter interesting conversation because this is a service dog, and, and the concept is is to to take the service dog to areas where their guardian is going to be. However, if it's detrimental to the pet that's a service animal, of course, you don't want to go there. Now, did the dog seem uncomfortable about the loud noises? Because very often, when I was working with dogs, you know, I had to get dogs adjusted to. I don't want to go too much into my background, but I had to get dogs adjusted to heavy duty gunfire. I had to get dogs to uh, adjusted to uh, the, the sound of explosives. Um, so you can desensitize them to the loud noises. They get used to the loud noises, um, but their hearing is a lot more sensitive. So depending on how the dog's reaction was, that would depend on my answer. If the dog wasn't reacting and he's uh, uh, used to the sounds and it wasn't bothering him that much, then it's fine. But if it was bothering him, then a decision would have had to be made by their guardian as not to be in the location where the dog was uncomfortable. But that was a decision that the, the guardian and the dog would know much more than I would know. Yeah, I felt really bad for the dog. 
Yeah, well, if the dog was upset, then the dog shouldn't have been there. But again, I don't know. As I said, I've had dogs that, that you could walk through a, a, a gunfire and, and explosives, and yet the dogs don't react to it in a scared way because they were desensitized to it. So not unsimilar to what I've done with dogs that were afraid of, of and cats that were afraid of thunderstorms. So you have these two cats now, right? Is that it? The two, how, do you rescue both of them? Yeah, there was, um, you know, there was a little child that was really shy, and wasn't going to get adopted because she was so, she was so shy. So I said, well, I want to take her because she's, she's not going to get adopted. Gosh. And she's really come a long way. You know, it's... I'll tell you something, Warren. I'll tell you something, because my vet asked me, it was three weeks after my, my favorite cat died, and she said, are you sure you're ready to adopt another cat? And I told her the only thing that hurts more than losing my cat, Moo, is the idea that some wonderful pet have to spend another night in a shelter because I can't get over my grief. Bless you, James. So I want to I tell people that think about if something happened to you and your animal had to go to a shelter, wouldn't you want someone to get that animal out of a shelter? James, you, you hit the nail on the head. You, you know, you're preaching to the choir with my audience, and one of the things about my audience is they get out there and preach more, but you're absolutely right. That's why I'm going to put you on hold, James. I want to send you something for your cats, um, but before I do that, I just want people to know uh, that there are so many dogs and cats at shelters, and some of the reasons that these dogs and cats are at shelters is their guardians have passed away. That's why if you, uh, if you, if you have a dog or a cat or several dogs or cats, it's so critical that you set up either a living trust uh, with an attorney so that if something were to happen to you, um, the dog or cat is not going to wind up at the shelter, as, as, as James just talked about. So, again, that's so important to remember that a living trust is critical if you have a pet. Just think about all of the dogs and cats at shelters that were, in fact, loved and adored. And sometimes it's the family of, of a deceased person that will bring their loved cat or dog. How they do that is beyond me. So make sure your dogs, your cats are taken care of if, heaven forbid, something were to happen to you. And we're going to send James. You know what? James sounds like a really neat guy. He's really wants to understand cats, let's send him a, a Suzette, let's send James a copy of uh, how to get your cat to do what you want. And I really do appreciate that phone call. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me take a break. When we come back, we got Vicki and Downey, Anita and Torrance, Larry and Simi Valley, Arnold and Sherman Oaks, Mike and Tarzana. We'll get to all your calls right after this. A quick break, then right back at you. You don't get this music anywhere else. Hey, we are back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein, 866 870 KRLA, the phone number, if you want to watch how I do the show. It's uh, Facebook.com slash Warren Pet. Right, here's an important story, and this is important for all my listeners out there. Are your dog and cat dirty toys making them and you and your family sick? Listen carefully. Veterinarians are now encouraging pet guardians to wash their pet's toys at least once a month, I say every other week, saying toys can be a big source of respiratory virus or microplasma bacteria. Other harmful contaminants could be hitching a ride on your pet's toys, include E. coli, as well as Giardia, which can actually be transmitted to human beings. Uh, some come from popular dog parks. According to veterinarians, they suggest your dog's toys and bowls should be washed at least once a month, I say every other week. Something that you don't even think about. You know, dog's playing with the toys. He's out in the backyard. You go to a dog park. You're throwing your dog's uh, tennis ball or whatever. I was at a big dog park the other day, and, and dogs were interacting with different tennis balls. So if you're going to do that, just make sure you wash them when you come home and and you wash your dog's toys at least every other week. That's what you should. And their bowls as well. A lot of people forget to do that. 866-870-KROA, the phone number. We are going to, uh, talking about adopting older pets. We're going to go to Anita and then Vicky. Anita in Tarzana, welcome to the pet show. Boy, it's actually Torrance. Oh, Torrance, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I've listened to you forever. I've never called before, but I turned you on uh, this morning and... I have a, a story relating to the question of your day, and also I um, adopted an older dog, so I can relate to all of uh, both subjects. Well, go ahead. Shoot away. Okay. Well, the, as far as the um, do they have feelings or psychological, I um, last August, my last cat died at 18 years old, and I have a 8-year-old Papillon who, while they loved each other, they really didn't, uh, you know, they're like brothers and sisters. I love you, but we're not really going to hang around together or whatever. <laughs> and as the cat um, got sicker and sicker, she spent most of her time on my bed, and my dog stayed on the bed with her for three days until um, she died. And then 
He was very lethargic, very, uh, he wouldn't eat for three days. And it's like, what the heck is going on? I, he was in mourning. Yeah, he was grieving. I mean, I talk about dogs and cats grieving all the time and people think that I'm crazy, but why would we not think that when you lose your best friend, whether you walk upright or you walk on all fours, you wouldn't be sad and grieving over the loss of, of something you loved? Right, it was, it was uh, really, well, not really eye-opening because I had a miniature pincher who went through the same thing a yeah. couple of years ago when her uh, BFF, my 14-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier, died, and she started howling, and she was a miniature pincher, not a hound dog. She was really, uh, really depressed, and after my Staffordshire Bull Terrier died, two months later, I found a little papillon at a gas station. And I brought him home, no identification, no microchip. And so, anyway, long story short, the men pin uh, got better having someone there, or another dog with her. And because my dog was, the, the Papillon was a stray, he helped her with a little, put a little bit more pep in her step, and she helped him become social. So there was a, um, a change in her. Yeah, I don't want to run out of time, Anita, but so what you're saying is basically that, that you believe that, that adopting an older dog or an older cat is the right thing to do, number one, but also at the same time, you understand or believe like I do that they definitely do have psychological or emotional issues just like people have. And why would we think any different? Yeah, and when my miniature pincher died, uh, she was 17 and a half and she died in her sleep, so that was good. But another papillon that I had about adopting the older dogs really quick, I happened to see her picture online. It was at the West Valley Shelter. She was, they had her described as 12 and never been stayed, and her owner had died. So I contacted them. Long story short, three days later, I went out there to get her because I wasn't going to let the dog be euthanized just because it outlived its owner. Well, she actually was, she was older than they said she was. She was like 13. She was deaf. She had bad teeth. She had a heart murmur and she had uh, bad skin. I'm, I, I'm up again. I'm up again. Anita, I'm going to be up against the heartbreak. So in other words, you adopted this older. I adopted her. I adopted her. I only had her 13 months, but I had her cremated and she's along with all of my other dogs. And she was, she was a wonderful dog for the 13 months that I had. And, and as I always say to people, when she crossed that rainbow bridge, Anita, she knew how much she was loved, and that's so important to me. So what do you have now? What type of pets do you have now? I have um, one dog. I still have the Papillon. He's eight years old. And um, it's kind of quiet just having one dog. At, at my highest, uh, I had four dogs and six cats, and for the most part, they all lived. Long well, you, Anita, you, Anita, you're definitely, I don't want to run out of time. You're doing definitely something, right? You just have the one dog right now. Um, adopt another one. Let me put you on hold at this point. I want to send you something for your dog. Uh, and we're going to send, you know what? It's an older dog. Let's send some author suit gold for that older dog. And I appreciate uh, the phone call. And I appreciate all you do. I'm just a little short on time there. Great phone call, by the way. The importance of adopting older dogs and older cats from shelters. And as she said, here was a 13-year-old dog brought into the shelter when its owner died. So please, again, you hear me talk about these living trusts. Please, please, please follow my advice and, and get one for your pet. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, Vicki and Downey. Welcome to the pet show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. What can I do for you? You know, I have three cats, um, and I knew, knew nothing about cats, but about four years ago, I uh, went to a rescue, and I got two cats, and they got along perfectly well. And then about 16 months ago, there was a feral that I was feeding that was really friendly, and I had it tested, and I brought it into my house. And everything was fine until probably about six or eight months ago. And now the feral keeps on attacking one of my cats. And um, he also started spraying, and the vet had said that he had been neutered, but they realized that it was just a cut on his ear, so they neutered him about four, uh, four months okay, ago. Okay, so here, the bottom line the bottom line is the vet thought the cat was neutered because it had a, a, an ear clipped? Yeah. All the vet had to do was lift the tail and see if the testicles were there. And they did, but what had happened is my vet wasn't there that day, so they had another vet assistant. But it doesn't, so listen, it doesn't, listen, you don't have to be a genius. I mean, you know, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm a behaviorist, but if I look at a right. lift the tail and I see two testicles there, I'm assuming the cat isn't neutered. Well, well, the thing is, they think they they only took out one testicle. Okay, so he was, so he was, he was. He, in other words, I don't know if he might have been born crypto orchid or mono orchid, depending. I understand that, but in other words, um, it, the fact that he wasn't neutered uh, is probably caused a lot of the aggressive behavior. The fact that he's marking is a lot of the behavior attributed to not being neutered as well. Plus, he's not as healthy because he's not neutered, but he's neutered now. I'm assuming. He is, but like he's attacking my other cat. Okay, my other cat. 
personality has changed and he's hiding. And today, unprovoked, um, he, my other cat was sitting next to me and he started sniffing him. My cat's terrified of him, my other one. And then all of a sudden he tried to bite him or he did bite him. He had fur in his mouth and attacked him. And I don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do. Listen to me carefully. Number one, this was a cat that was living outdoors and bless you for taking him inside. But when you take a cat from the inside, uh, from the outside in, uh, if he's not mentally stimulated, this type of behavior would be normal. So you have two things working against you. Not enough mental stimulation, I'm sure. And at the same time, you have a cat that wasn't neutered, a cat that was outside, might have bred before with other cats outside. So he might smell other cats out there. And that's probably why he's marking in the house. Here's what I want you to do. Temporarily put another litter box down in your house with some dirt and grass from outside. That's number one. Number two okay. is I want you to bring those cardboard boxes and paper bags you hear me talk about every single week into the house. Change them every day. The more mental stimulation, especially for an outdoor cat he gets, the better off you are. And number three, I want you to start growing some organic plants for the cat, organic catnip and other safe plants for the cat inside. You have a cat, you know, it's kind of like once you have someone who spent all this time outside and you bring them inside and that's where we want to keep them. If we don't make the inside outdoor interesting, the cat's going to develop other psychological or personality issues. And he's going to want to be dominant. Who knows how he had to fight off other cats. He had a bite on his ear from outside. Yeah. So he was fending off other cats. So when he sees another cat, his first thing is, how can I, how can I defend my territory, defend myself? So I would be doing that. If you can, I would feed the cats two or three times a day instead of once a day. But make sure those cardboard boxes, those paper bags are in all rooms. Make sure they're on top of each other. Get a high cat scratching post in your house because this way the, the aggressive cat can go to that higher perch where he'll feel more confident. If you put all those pieces together, you should be right on track, Vicki. Okay. And then so in, in the meantime, so if I do that, then, then that will maybe uh, – take away some of his aggression. Yeah, not, it won't take away the aggression. At the beginning, what we'll do is distract the aggressive behavior. He's more focused on that new cardboard box that smells like salmon or chicken that came into the house than he is about your other cat. The other thing I might try to do also is take a washcloth, rub it on the cat that he's attacking, and take that washcloth and then rub it on the feral. Put the scent of the cat he's attacking onto the cat that's attacking. That would be beneficial as well. I got to move on, Vicky. Let me put you on hold. Thank I want to say, oh no, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold. And the lovely Suzette's going to pick up and we're going to send you also a copy of how to get your cat to do what you want. I know I'm giving away a lot of books, but so many people, that's just the bottom line. There is no really great, great books on, on cat behavior and, and how to understand them from the inside. out. Everyone wants to want to correct, stop. You don't want to do that. You want to figure out why the problem's there and resolve it. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get to. Come on, you guys know you want to move your head back and forth when you hear Gomez talk. <laughs> and we are back on the page. It's my new favorite song. The phone number, by the way, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me go to Mike in Tarzana. Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Hi, Warren. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. What's up? Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I have a, We have an 11-year-old wiener dog who yesterday ran to the front door barking with someone knock and uh, threw his back out or uh -huh. something. It has paralyzed his back two legs. We took him to the emergency room or the vet, and uh, he has a bulging disc in his L4. So they, they, the, the surgery was $7,500, which just was unreasonable. We can't afford it. So it has left us with him. Uh, they, they gave him a shot of steroid, and we brought him home. It wasn't a bad. Uh, they took x-rays. It wasn't a bad bulging disc, but so they were hopeful maybe the steroids will work. But He's not really going to the bathroom as normal, and it's a challenge. And sometimes he looked at me like I'm, I'm suffering. And so I'm looking for just some advice if there's any other treatment options. Yeah, there's a lot of treatment options out there. First of all, what I would be doing is getting an opinion from a veterinary orthopedic surgeon. And that's, that's where I would go right off the bat. I recommended that to someone else the other day who I'll talk about him later. A friend of mine just adopted an older bulldog with really, really bad hips. You know, it's not unusual for the back to go out on a dachshund. Let's face it. It's, it let's be realistic. However, and as, as great as your veterinarian may be, and I'm sure he's super, having a, the, the, the x-rays read uh, by a veterinary uh, orthopedist will make all the difference in the world. Now, in terms of finances, um, it may cost you a little drop more up front to see the veterinary orthopedist, but you're going to get a quicker result. And he may say, well, you may need surgery. You may not need surgery. Let's wait. Maybe some acupuncture work, maybe some hydrotherapy will work. Let's try this medication. So before we go further, before we just try to cover up the problem, I think definitely in your case, Mike, a second opinion is warranted. 
okay. And and then listen, first of all, you know, it's not unusual for dachshunds. How old did you say your dog was? 11. Well, all right, for dachshund, you know, 11 years old is, you know, not that old. So, but I, I think getting a second opinion from a specialist is definitely the way to go. You would do it for any member of the family. $7,500 sounds like a tremendous amount of money, and I know it is. But if you work with the right veterinarian, if the surgery is deemed to be successful, I'm sure they can work something out with you payment-wise or whatever. But it's your dog. You love your dog. He's worth every penny you spend. But let's make sure we get a quicker diagnosis from an orthopedic surgeon first. And there, luckily, you're in Tarzana. Uh, there's a lot of orthopedic surgeons around. In fact, call your own vet and say, hey, listen, doc, I trust you, but if you can recommend an orthopedic surgeon, I'd love to get a second opinion. Okay. All right, All right. listen, anyway, Mike, thanks a lot. I'm going to put you on. I'm going to send you something also. I am going to send Mike. You know what? What we're going to send Mike is that something a little different. We're going to send him that brand new product from uh, my good friends over at NatureVet. It's hemp seed oil uh, for the joint, hemp seed oil for the joint for his dog. Uh, I think that'll make a difference made by NatureVet, and it's the one for the joint, the hemp seed oil for the joint. There's four different kinds. This is the one for the joint. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870. Carol, I got to take another break. When I come back, Larry Arnold, David J. will get to you. Got a whole other hour to go. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. The phone number here, 866-870, KRLA. 866-870-5752. So back on the Pet Show, I'm Warren X9, the phone number 866-870-KRLA. Uh, we're going to be breaking for the top of the hour in a minute, but you guys are going to be my first callers coming up. We got Larry, we got Marshall, we got David, we got Jay, we got Arnold. We'll get to your calls. By the way, a little hint here. I know it's tough to get through sometimes. Sometimes the best time to call is when I do break at the top of the hour. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA. Just a reminder, everyone that calls in will be getting a great gift for their dog or cat. Many of the items I'm giving away are, as I say, 25 35 40 bucks and more. Also, a great story. A good friend of mine named Doug Stephan does an, uh, a syndicated radio show all over the country. I do a show every Wednesday morning. Just the other day, adopted this amazing year-old, year-and-a-half-old bulldog in Rhode Island, drove it to Massachusetts. The bull dog was a, a breeding dog from a, a horrible puppy mill, would have never gotten another home. The dog has bad hip dysplasia. Uh, it's going to need surgery. It's going to need a lot of finances. Hats off to my friend Doug for taking this dog. As we know, the rescue and said, you know what? No one else would have adopted this dog with the problems that he has. Doug took this bulldog in. He's a bulldog lover, and I'm sure his new bulldog is going to live happily ever after and get the best care it ever can. So never hesitate to adopt, no, no matter what the situation may be. Great time to give me a when I take a break for the top of the hour, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. A real quick break, then right back to all of your phone calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. I'm Warren Eckstein. You're listening to The Pet Show. And we are back on The Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. So the question... Someone asked the other day, hey, Warren, the therapy dogs actually like their jobs. What do you think? According to a brand new study, when I'm talking about therapy dogs, I'm talking about the dogs brought to hospitals and nursing homes. And the answer, a resounding absolutely yes, especially if the therapy dogs have an opportunity to be played with when they're working. They really enjoy what they're doing. It just makes common sense. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866 866-870. 5752, that is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your uh, comments and questions. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. So is it possible that, that dogs and cats have psychological issues? Of course they do. They're living with us. What would you think? Of course they have psychological issues. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little while, answer all of your questions. We're going to get to Larry. We got Arnold in Sherman Oaks, Larry in Simi Valley, Marsh in Pasadena, Francine in Hacienda. But I got someone on the phone that, that I had lunch with yesterday. So let me go right to the phone and speak to my friend, Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte, welcome. Hi, Warren. You are one of the, one of the most wonderful people I've ever met, you and me. I wanted to thank you for all you do and for taking those little blind dogs in your arms as if they were your babies yesterday. how they do overnight? How, by the way, how did Bingo and, uh, and Liz do overnight? They did amazing. They fit right in with the other two little guys that they got to meet when they got back. Bingo did great with the big dog, sniffing his, reading his license plate when he got back. <laughs> he did amazing. He's a trooper. Uh, you know, they were such incredible dogs, and the fact that, that they were both so old, blind, partially deaf, and, and the fact that they, when I was holding them and when you were holding them, they just were so calm and so mellow as if they knew, you know what, uh, when my time comes, I know I was loved, and I can cross that bridge with a smile on my face. 
There you go. And, you know, they're so with it. They're, they're still so alert in their own ways. They're so with it. That's what is really neat, too, about old dogs that you just don't think they have a lot going on. Uh, they sure do. So anyway, I know we're going to be talking about this in the future, but you guys have a big event coming up in July. And, you know, I'm going to be there. I bought my tickets yesterday. And we're going to have a lot of my listeners get some tickets as well. So that's coming up in July, right? That's June 24th. That's Geraldine's event. Yep, that's June 7th. Oh, June, Sunday, June. June okay. <laughs> I'm always yeah. a month. I'm oh, always a month know, behind. <laughs> well, no, and no, Warren. That's okay. And you know, it was just so great to see you. And the way Warren, I just want to tell your audience the way that Warren holds animals, the way that he relates to animals, is so incredibly special. It's just obvious his love and ability to send that love to animals i've never seen anything like it really well thank you so much for sure maybe it's because i feel more comfortable around animals than i do with people as you saw yesterday <laughs> Well, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, thank you. Well, so I'm looking forward. I'm so, I'm looking, so looking forward to seeing you guys on the 22nd, even hopefully before that. Um, but I want to send you something. For you. Do you have a copy of my cat book? I do not have a copy of your cat book. Good. I'm not sending you one because I'm going to put you on hold and I'm going to send you a copy of my dog book. So hold on. Lovely Suzette's going to pick up. My new friend Charlotte runs an incredible organization. You'll hear me talk more about her. So let's send her a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want. And I appreciate the phone call. Yeah, it was a great, great lunch yesterday. Uh, Alula's Casina in Santa Monica, my favorite Mexican restaurant. She made this great little veggie meal. And it was just an incredible day with people that really care about animals like Charlotte. And Charlotte took those uh, two little guys uh, back home with her. And I'm so glad to hear that Liz named after Elizabeth Taylor and Bingo uh, were just amazing, just really amazing animals. I'm so glad they're doing so well. Makes my heart feel good. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number 866-870-5752. Let's go to uh, Larry. Hey, Larry, welcome to the show. Larry, you got your radio on, Larry. Hey, Larry. Hi, uh, Larry. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to put you on hold, Larry, because you're listening to your radio, and if you listen to your radio, I can't get to your call. So, who's been holding on the longest here? We're gonna go to uh, let's go to oh, let's go to uh, Marsha in Pasadena. Hey, Marsha, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you very much. I'm so glad to talk to you. Well, I'm waiting all week to talk to you, Marsha. What can I do to help you out? Well, I have a white lab, and she's two years old, and she eats everything inside. It's a Labrador retriever. I'm surprised she didn't eat the phone. Well, she tries to. I'm telling you, she gets up on the sink and eats any food that might be there. How she, old a dog is she? Two. She's two years old. Has she been doing this her whole life? Well, as long as I've had her, and I've had her for a year and a oh, half. Oh, so you adopted her at a year old? Pardon? You adopted her at about a year old? Yes. And where did you get her from? Oh, Bainbridge Labs. So she was using for research? No, no, it's just where that I got her from. She came from, I think, Kentucky. From Kentucky. Do you know what she was there for a year for? Then why they gave Actually, her up? I got her at about six months. But do you know what she was there for? Oh, she, that's where they raise her. Raise her for what? They raise these do the white labs there. Oh, they so this you them. got the dog from a breeder? Yes. Okay, so very, you know, it's very possible that the dog didn't receive a lot of socializing when she was younger, uh -huh. probably did not receive early training and the same energy it takes to learn how to do something wrong, but used to focus on doing something right. So it's very, very possible the behavior you're dealing with, rather than trying to correct her, how about we try to figure out why? Yep. Number one, how many times a day do you feed her? I feed her just once in the morning. Knock it off. Knock it off. She's got to be fed at least three times a day. Not more food. We don't want a chubby Labrador. But we have a dog that may have been fed differently. So let's feed her three times a day. And when we feed her, instead of feeding her out of one dish, let's take her feeding and put it into two dishes, separate them by a foot or two, so she always realizes there's something else to eat around. Okay. The other thing you need to do is make sure that nothing on your counter tastes good. You need to be a lousy cook for the next couple of weeks, okay? <laughs> so I want nothing on the counter that tastes good. You can use a product called Bitter Yuck. You can put a piece of paper towel up there with the Bitter Yuck on it, whatever you need to do. Also, at two years old, the Labrador has an incredible amount of energy. How much exercise is she getting? I have somebody that walks her t three times a week. Three times a week is a great walk, but is anyone running her in the backyard, chasing she her? She has plenty of room to run around. I have another, I have a black lab too. Uh, 
So they run around together. So you do look, when you look out the backyard, you see them running around. I do. And the reason I asked that is because I remember I had a client years ago in Dallas, Texas. They said, Warren, I have 10 acres. My dogs get plenty of exercise. And when I looked out the window, the dog was lying under a tree, getting no more exercise than the dog living in a studio apartment in Burbank. Well, she does lay in the sun. She loves the sun. Okay, but I want to make sure you focus on exercise. I also want to make sure you focus on mental stimulation. By that, I mean rotating her toys. So what I want you to do is, besides all of the toys that they have, and I'm sure they have plenty, pick them up today, put down new ones today, pick the new ones up in two days, pick those up and rotate them every other day. It's like taking a toy away from a kid. If you give it back an hour later, it's like a brand new toy. So rotate the toys. The exercise factor is important. Now, I'm sure you did some training with the dog. However, there are certain dogs that need a job, and very often Labradors are those type of dogs. I trained many Labradors for drug and bomb detection, so I'm very familiar with the breed. So what we need to understand about the dog is maybe you should do some advanced training with the dog. Not that I care how she reacts to the training, but it'll mentally give her more stimulation, which will help curtail some of the problems you're dealing with. So more exercise, number one, feeding the dog at least two or three times a day out of two dishes, number two, maybe some increased training and increased exercise exercise, put those pieces together, and I'm sure that your problem will start to dissipate a little bit at a time. Do you, uh, is, do you think two cups of dry food is enough for her? Is she overweight? A little. Two, and that's all she gets a day is two cups well, of dry food? then I give him an apple in the afternoon. Yeah, two cups of dry food sounds a little low for a Labrador, I but I don't so want to... She's but I don't, starving. She eats grass. I mean, yeah, yeah well, that's why, but that's why I'm saying, in other words, you're feeding her once a day. So if you're giving her two cups in the morning, by afternoon, she's hungry. You know, you could feed me whatever you want in the morning, but at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, if I don't get my Hershey bar, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you giving your dog a Hershey bar, okay? But So it's important to understand that dogs that get hungry, just like kids that are hungry and people that are hungry, are more apt to be mischievous than dogs and cats that have a full belly. Well, should I give her more food? I wouldn't give her more food right off the bat right now what I would be doing is I would taking the food that you're giving her and give her maybe a cup in the morning because she's been hanging out overnight. So a cup in the morning, then maybe a half a cup in the afternoon, another half a cup later on. And using as a treat, you can give her like the little organic carrots. I have my dogs convinced they're made out of liver. So you can do that as well. What do you think of rawhide bones? You know, it depends. There are some rawhide that's fine. And, and one of the, the things is that I would only use, if I were going to use rawhide, I would only use American-made rawhide. And the reason for that is a lot of the rawhide that comes in from foreign countries is not really cow rawhide. It's it's rawhide made from uh, water buffalo, which is very high in calories. And very often, some of that uh, some of that uh, rawhide from other countries is treated with chemicals I would never recommend. Okay, okay. More exercise, more feeding. She'll be absolutely fine, I promise. Okay, thank you so much. Keep me posted. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you. You know what? It's a Labrador retriever. I'm going to send you. You sound like the dogs are doing okay. I am going to send you some, you know what, I'm going to send you some Lucy Petformas for Life pet food. Change the food gradually. Start adding some of the Lucy Petformas for Life pet food to the dogs. Start, in, you know, put a little bit in there. And then day by day, take a little bit of the old food out. Make the transition a little bit at a time. And the fact that you're feeding her three times a day now will make it a lot easier. People just don't understand that. A dog with a hungry belly is going to get into mischief. And a lot of people say that they feed their dogs once a day or, or sometimes twice a day, which is okay. But remember this. You can literally, literally... Give me a pill the size of my pinky fingernail in the morning, and I can get all the nutrition I need. But am I going to be hungry? You bet I'm going to be hungry. You know what happens when Warren's hungry? He gets into mischief too. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Let me take Larry real quickly. Hey, Larry, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Warren. Uh, we're going to have four large dogs in a couple of weeks in our backyard and i was wondering how do you know which one is dominant and can it be a woman a female dominant or or uh, and uh will they fight each other well i don't where where, where are these where, where are these four dogs coming from larry well we've got two of them uh and uh uh, they're coming from Virginia. I mean, but where are they now? What are they at a shelter or at a person's house? They're, they're going to be on their way. They're living at home, and they'll be on their way in a week. 
Okay, what I want you to do is when you introduce the dogs to each other, introduce them on neutral territory. Don't all of a sudden bring the two new dogs into the home with your two old dogs. Introduce them on neutral territory. See how they react with each other. Make sure when you do bring them home, you don't leave them by themselves for a while. Obviously, you've got to observe them carefully and watch them carefully. But the more time you give them to get to know each other when you're walking them on neutral territory, the quicker they'll adapt to each other. There's nothing wrong with having four dogs at one time. I've had as many as 30, actually 32. It's all a matter of socializing, exposing, and making sure that the dogs that are already there don't feel like their nose is out of joint because of the arrival of the new pet. So even give them more attention than you've ever given them before, and you should be absolutely fine, Larry. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Warren. Thank you. I'm, you know, normally I send you something. I know you called a few times. So, Larry, what I'm going to do is whatever I was going to send you, I will donate to a local rescue, a humane society. i got to take a quick break. By the way, great time to give me a call. Arnold, Pamela, Francine, we'll get to you in a second. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA. I still got hugs and kisses to give away. I got some more Lucy Pet Food to give away. Kids and Pets, those T-shirts, copies of my book, Cat's Incredible Cat Litter, Mushroom Max, Author Suit Gold. Everyone who calls in and gets to me live on the Year, we'll be getting one of these fabulous gifts for their best friends. So it's a great time to call me, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through a quick break, then right back to your phone calls. It's got to be a doggy heaven. There has to be a doggy heaven. I believe in a doggy heaven because if there's no doggy heaven, then heaven's not where I want to go. Need my dogs, need my cats, need my animals. Hey, we are back on the pet show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call. I still got some great stuff to give away. Some of the bigger items, by the way, my own hugs and kisses, vitamin, mineral supplement treats, some more Lucy Pet Food, Kids and Pets t-shirts, books, Cats Incredible, Office of Gold. Great time to call me. Again, a reminder that everyone that calls in and gets to me live on the air, I will answer your pet question at the same time. Send your pet a great gift. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. And if you want to see how I do the show, you can also go to facebook.com slash Warren Pet, facebook.com slash Warren Pet. And again, the number here, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. Let me get back to the phone lines here. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Arnold in Sherman Oaks. Hey, Arnold, welcome to the show. Uh, yes, thank you, Warren. Um, I've got a, um, a six-year-old female bull terrier. Ah, Spuds McKenzie dog. Exactly so. What and color? What color is, is she? Sujia von Porker. <laughs> so, what color is she? The, uh, she's um, uh, a uh, tan and white. Okay, because they're yeah. beautiful. They're, they, you know, they come in white. Oh, they come white. brindle. They're just beautiful. Yeah, they sure are. And she's very sweet. But she has incontinence. Uh, she used to, when her stool was very soft, have a you know walk around with a messy, wet butt. Yeah. But we, we put her on Hill's uh, WD diet. Uh-huh. Uh, kibble, and I add water to it. I don't know if that's important or not, but I want you to evaluate that. Uh, and and since then, with all that fiber in WD, uh, it, it, she has the stool is either hard or um, or s somewhat moist. But well, here's the bottom you know, line, okay? The stool on a dog should be pretty consistent. You know, that goes off every you know once a while, just like with people. But it should be pretty consistent. What does the vet say? Well, one vet said there's nothing to be done for incontinence. Oh, yeah. Well, he might be wrong, okay? He, he might not be able to do something, but that doesn't mean nothing can be done. I'm glad to hear that. That's why I'm calling you. Okay. There's a couple of things to take into consideration. First of all, I would definitely get another opinion at this point, okay, in terms about the food or what's causing the incontinence, okay? Now, I don't know why he put her on the special food. Is there any other reason besides the fact that her stool was loose or well, hard? She was, she was prone diarrhea. Okay. So he uh, switched to food. Those movements and we had to clean it up. Yeah, I know. But then he switched He switched to food. But what happened when you switch to food? Now the dog is, is sometimes uh, maybe a little constipated and other times a little diarrhea. So it's not, whatever it is, it's not working right. So getting a second opinion is really, really critical at this point. I would start considering maybe a change in the food. But I would get a second opinion from another vet first. If you're going to change the food, I recommend Lucy Pet Formers for Life with that uh, uh, prebiotic balanced fiber. It can make all the difference in the world. So that's one 
one of the things I would recommend, but you never change well, the food. Give me, give me that again. I will, and I'm going to say, don't worry, I'm going to send you some. Okay, but more important than that, I want you to understand that whenever you switch your dog's food, you do it gradually. You increase the new food, and then you do it gradually. Now, any time you have a dog, and a six-year-old uh, bull terrier, I don't know why the vet said it's incontinent, because how often does it go on the bed? How often? Um three times, four times a week. Okay, so that's not really incontinence. In other words, it's very possible that the dog may not even know it's going at that point. It may be in it, a deep sleep. It doesn't sleep. know. Okay, it so it's in a, de it's in a deep sleep. he feels sleep. ashamed when he's... When, of when course, he's, he's embarrassed. Dogs get embarrassed too. Get a second opinion. This is not the first time I've heard about this scenario. Get a second opinion. We have to get that stool regulated because if the stool is consistent, when you take him out at night, he will eliminate and there won't be anything left for him to leave those little nuggets on your bed. So that's really, she really has, important. Has, can I interject sure. this? She has two meals a day and, and a cup a cup, a full cup each. I'm not overly concerned. Now, Hills is a fine food. I would never say anything against Hills. It's made by, I believe it's still owned by, maybe it was made by Colgate Palmolive years ago. But anyway, it's a fine food. However, if it's not agreeing with your dog and it's not working with your dog, that perhaps you have to make a change as you would with any member of the family. So I'm going to be suggesting the Lucy Pet Formas Live Pet Food because I've had the results from people that have used it. And that may not be the total answer for you. The vet may give you some other medication or whatever. But right now, we need to find out what to do. And by the way, Worst scenario, and this may sound a little crazy to people, uh, but if that were my dog and there were nothing that could be done at night when I got into bed, I would put a diaper on the dog and call it a night. Okay, that's that's not bad advice. And by the way, those diapers are available online as well. So anyway, don't go anywhere. Keep us posted, by the way. Don't go anywhere, Arnold. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm also going to send you some Lucy Pet Formas. <laughs> I hope Joey knows that I'm sending so much food away. But the animals need it out there. They really, really do. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Uh, that is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Uh, Francine, we're going to get to you in a minute. We got Pamela. We'll get to Eileen. I want to do a little story, and then uh, I'll take a break, and then we'll get to your phone call. So while I'm doing this, is a great time to call me, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get there. And reminder that everyone who calls in will get something for their pet. By the way, um, you can now follow me on YouTube. I got some great, in fact, this show will be on YouTube on Tuesday. It's youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein. I'm on Twitter now. I'm tweeting. I'm getting really into this thing. So it's twitter.com at Warren Eckstein. Or, of course, you can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Pet Show. So the question came up this week. Is Warren crazy? That's not the question. Maybe that should be the question. Psychological disorders that your dogs and cats may be suffering from. Do animals really have or develop psychological disorders? For years, people said, Warren, you are the one who needs the straitjacket. You are the one who needs to be put away. Well, listen to me carefully. When your dog or cat start acting weirder than usual, there may be something psychologically going on. It may be that your dog or cat is anxious. Anxiety can go from one end of the leash to the other. So before you evaluate your dog's anxiety, evaluate your own, but it's definitely something that can be treated. A lot of dogs suffer with obsessive compulsive disorders. I just recently worked with a dog that would chase a ceiling fan for hours and hours. So that's another psychological disorder that dogs have that people said I was crazy about talking about. And what about post-traumatic stress disorder. We hear a lot about post-traumatic stress disorder when it comes to our, our, our heroes, our military, our police officers, our firefighters. But what about the dogs that serve with them? What about the dogs that work as therapy dogs? These dogs can often suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is something I really kind of work with nowadays. A lot of the dogs I help out during the week or speak to or consult with during the week are dogs that have been in horrible situations, beaten, abused, dog fights, bait dogs, whatever. Many of them come with post-traumatic stress disorder, just an other disorder that people thought that Warren was nuts about when he started talking about, as well as depression. You know, we had a call earlier on today's show where someone said to me, you know, we lost one of our pets. It's, you know, it's kind of possible for a dog to get depressed. And the answer was a resounding yes. Why do we think that we're so much more emotional than our pets? There's not an emotion that human beings have other than maybe jealousy. But sometimes the dogs do have a little jealousy uh, that our dogs don't have. They've been living with us since we've been walking upright. Why are we so egotistical to think that, that we're the only one allowed to have psychological problems? Of course they can. And here's the most important thing, okay? and I'll get to your phone calls, I promise. The most important thing to remember is if your pet has a problem, it's not the end of the world. Just like if any other member of the family had a problem with the right diagnosis, a lot of patience, a lot of hugging, a lot of kissing, make all the difference in the world. They can be brought around. That's what I do, helping animals that are distressed or, or having anxiety. So again, they called me crazy, so be it. 
animals definitely, in my opinion, can suffer with psychological disorders and emotional disorders. Do you agree or disagree? Give me a call. I'll send you a great gift for your pet. The phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. My engineer, Alex, is looking at me like, Warren, you better take a break or I'm going to throw something at you. So let me take a quick break and right back to your phone. Hey, we are back on the pet show on Warren next time. Phone number 866 k R L A. I want you guys to check out my website, thepetshow.com. I started putting some real current news, lots of information, hundreds of articles, lots of great videos, all available at thepetshow.com. Remember that, T-H-E, thepetshow.com. Check out the articles. Check out the stories. I think you'll enjoy them. 866-870-KRLA. That is the phone number right here, 866-870-5752. Still got plenty of time for calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Um, we are going to, who's up here? We're going to go to Mike in Hacienda Heights. Hey, Mike, welcome to the Pet Show. I'm sorry, Francine, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi. How are you? My parents' dachshund was lying in the sun one day, and I walked by and said, Hi, Hannah. And I went back two hours later, and she was laying in the same spot. I thought, Uh-oh. And she looked at me like, Dummy, do something about this. So I was a chiropractic student, so I adjusted her low back, and she got up and walked away. But she'd been laying there for at least two hours, if not more, visiting friends with a dachshund that was doing wheaties around the room, threw her low back out. She wouldn't let me touch her. I had the owner. I said, pick her up, hold her under her shoulder blades, like hold her under your arms, and just very gently swing her back and forth. And her leg, her hind legs were all up tight. And by the time they got through gently swinging her back and forth, she, they put her down and she was fine. I, it, she it, had thrown her low back. Yeah, it's a great story. I can't recommend that, swinging the dog back and forth. However, um, yeah, I, I can't recommend that. But let me tell you what I do recommend. Are you a chiropractor now? Yes. Okay. I, I believe the law is that you can practice chiropractics on a dog under the supervision of a veterinarian, a licensed veterinarian, yes. am I correct? So yes. I am a big fan. I've heard a tremendous amount of success with chiropractics, acupressure, acupuncture, hydrotherapy, and other types of therapy. But chiropractics, I've heard a lot of great things about. So my recommendation would be that Mike, when he called, Mike, that would be a great idea. Speak to your veterinarian, see if he can refer you to a chiropractor or work with a chiropractor. Many vets do that can help you out. And you're absolutely right. I have seen dogs and, and that, that were having difficulty walking, and I've seen chiropractics really help. So I don't recommend the swinging back and forth. You're a chiropractor. It's something you can do. But the bottom line is, yes, something could be done. So seeking a, a chiropractor that knows how to specifically not only work on people but work on pets in conjunction with your veterinarian is definitely a way to go. Are you seeing many, many, uh, many patients that are, are four-legged, by the way, Francie? I'm retired, oh, so, so I see my pets. You see, you <laughs> I bet you massage them every day. Yeah, I do. They expect it. Of course they, they expect me like, okay, it's my turn. It's time. I'll put on some Enya and let's get the massage started here. I'm sure that's what they're doing, Francine. How many dogs do you have? Two right now. Uh, what kind? Uh, a stray border collie and an Australian shepherd. Uh, no, I mean, Australian cattle dog. All you need Very is all, all you need is a couple of dozen sheep in the backyard, huh? No, I help volunteer at a place that has goats. Oh, so that you you have, let them work the way they enjoy it. Sometimes. Ah, super. Anyway, listen, Francine, great call. Don't go anywhere. Let me put you on hold, and I want to send Francine. You know what? I am going to send you a jar of my own. Hugs and kisses because these are working dogs. They're older dogs. I want to keep those hips and joints in good shape. I want to make sure they're digesting their food properly. So, and, and this coats are going to look fabulous, by the way. So, hugs and kisses on their way. And I really do appreciate that phone call. I see that my friend Geraldine is calling from Santa Monica. It was uh, it was uh, Lula's uh, restaurant that was at yesterday. What a great place! Hey, Geraldine, welcome to the show. Hey, Warren. Happy Cinco de Mayo from Lula's in well, Santa Monica. I, thank, I wish I could be there. Cinco de Mayo, I'd love to celebrate, but I had my celebration with you guys yesterday. Well, I think we did enough celebrating yesterday I, for, uh, <laughs> for, to last us all weekend. How are you? I could not be better, Geraldine. I just want to follow up, too, with Charlotte's call. I was so happy to hear that she called in, and I would like to second that you were amazing with those two blind dogs. It just... Um, the way you you handled them it was it was really uh, profound actually well, you know, it's interesting because people think the way I handled the dogs made them nice and mellow and calm. But quite honestly, Geraldine, the dogs actually made me feel better, made me calmer, made me more relaxed. And, and any time I'm having an important meeting or conversation via the phone, Denise will tell you, I always have to have a dog in my lap. 
I think it's wonderful. Um, so thank you so much. I do have a question um, yeah. about uh, one of my Basset Hounds. Sure, go ahead. Daphne Land. Yeah, go ahead. She's, a, she's 11 and a half years old, and we discovered something that I have never in my dog life ever heard of. It's called mites. Oh, yeah, mites are very, very common, especially ear mites. Yeah, well, these were coming out of her nose, actually. And um, so uh, what, what Charlotte recommended ivermectin. Uh, a vet recommended revolution. What do you think? And is it contagious with my other dogs? It's an interesting question. You got me. I've never been around a dog that had the mites coming out of his nose. I've had them coming out of ears. I've had them coming out of other uh, other areas of the body, but never out of the nose. So uh, did they tell you, you know, there's different types of mites. Have they been diagnosed by the vet? Yeah, white mites. Hmm. I, you know, at this point, I, I mean, I love Charlotte, but I would follow the vet's advice because if it's not working, you can go back and do more questioning with him. But I would follow the vet's advice at this point. I don't have another answer. It's kind of an unusual problem, but I'll do some research and let you know. Okay. Okay. That would be great. And so I will, I'll be on your show whenever we set it up and I will see you in Malibu, Cornell, uh, June 24th. I'm so looking forward to it. I hope a lot of my listeners join us and pick up the tickets. It's going to be a great day. But don't go anywhere, Gerald. I want to send you something, too, because of that great meal you made me yesterday. So I'm putting Geraldine on hold, and I am going to send Geraldine. Uh, you know what? We're going to send Geraldine one of those T-shirts. I was joking with them yesterday how colorblind I am because I see no colors at all. I'm not one of those guys that sees a little color. I see black and white. That's the way I see the world. And so these T-shirts are made up. Black T-shirts with white lettering. Did she hang up? Did Geraldine hang up? All right, Geraldine, call back. I want to say, if I, if I don't hear back from you, I'll get you one of those T-shirts anyway. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Hey, Pamela, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, Warren. Um, I have an eight-year-old female rescue, Maltese, and um, I worry about her because she's very, she seems to be bored. She doesn't play with toys. She sleeps a great deal. And um, how old did you say she was? Eight. Does she get along with other dogs? No, she barks incessantly at other dogs. But what if she's around another dog, close up with another dog? If she knows the dog, she's fine. Okay, there's a couple of things to take into consideration. First of all, I'm assuming the dog is healthy. She's been checked up? Yes. Okay, so it's very possible that she's bored. Now, when you say she sleeps a lot, do you walk the dog three times a day? At least twice. Okay, and what about your backyard? Is it interesting for the dog? I have no backyard. We're in an apartment. Okay, so one, of the, so there you go. In other words, she's either in the apartment or she's on the leash. What I would try to do is is make some doggy friends with her and, and throw a little party for her. Actually, invite other dogs over to your home or go to their home or meet outside, meet in an area. And once she gets to meet these same dogs over and over again, and they establish a relationship with each other, it'll give her the opportunity. Let me tell you what's going on. And this is going to sound chauvinistic and it's so politically incorrect. So bear with me, folks. Okay, here's the bottom line. There are some times, just some times, that men have to speak to other men. There are some times that women have to speak to other women. And there are some times that dogs have to speak to other dogs. So I think establishing a relationship, as much as you love the dog and as much as you care for the dog, establishing a relationship and heading, getting her over the boredom factor because she has the opportunity to play with other dogs. And you should get down on all fours and play with her as well. I'll give you an example. I Thank God Denise doesn't call the show. But if you were to come to my house, now my dog's almost 16 years old, about 3 o'clock every afternoon, I will get down on all fours, put his toys in my mouth, and tease him just to get him stimulated mentally, and he'll chase me around or chase the toy that I'm playing with. So sometimes you have to be a little eccentric. Imagine that, me being eccentric when it comes to the animals. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Try to form a little group in your area, a little play group. Maybe put up a sign. You have a friendly dog. Let's meet. Let's talk. You'll meet new friends. Your dog will meet new friends as well. I do that with other dogs that she knows. We get them together once in a while, and she meets a lot of dogs outside. Does she enjoy it? Does she enjoy it? No, she's sort of standoffish. She, I don't think she knows the dog. <laughs> she really doesn't behave like a dog. and um, she, but wait, she not might not behave like a dog, but she right. looks like a dog, she smells yes. like a dog, and she eats <laughs> like a dog. So she's a dog. So in other words, whatever you are thinking, force the situation a little bit, force the play a little bit, force the interaction, find one dog she can't live without, establish that relationship, and then add a little bit onto your, your club, and, and she will become the hit of the hood, I promise. 
Okay, and what do I do about the chewing of her toes? That's the only thing she seems to like. She won't play with toys. She won't do anything. She chews on her toes? She chews her toes incessantly. It may be it may, bottom or top? Uh, toes? Yeah. Uh, uh, front, front paws. No, but bottom of the paws or top of the paws? Oh, both. Okay, then I, you know what? I would have her check for allergies at this point. I'm going to put you on hold, but I would definitely have her check for allergies. In the meantime, I am going to send you a great product. It's brand new for my friends at Nature Vet. So, Suzette, this is another new product I'm sending out. It's the hemp seed oil, but this is the one for allergies. The hemp seed oil for allergies will be on its way for your dog. And I do appreciate that phone call. 866-870-KROLA. Quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Ah, oh, we may have fun. This hey, let me do this, okay? I do this every week. I'm going to try to get to you, Marie, you to Eileen. However, if you're listening, if you're driving around, if you're shopping for your pets right now and you can't get to a phone and you have a pet question, reminder that right after I get off the air here at 1 o'clock, I go across the hall and do my national Canadian show. It's the same type of show. I give away the same type of prizes. But let me give you that phone number. If you don't get through now or you're driving around, you can't call, and you got this burning question about your pets, here's the phone number for the network show. It starts at 1 o'clock. You'll be the first ones calling. Don't start calling till 1 because it goes into an entirely different place. It goes into Washington, D.C., comes back here to Glendale, and that's a whole schmoozy thing. But anyway, the bottom line is here's the number for the national show if you can't get through right now, and you can start calling at 1 o'clock. That number is 877 877- Seven two five eight two five five. Same type of show, same type of prizes. Eight seven 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 two five eight two five five. Eight seven 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 two five eighty two fifty five. That is the way to get through. Some of the strangest names for dogs this year: Ruffy the Vampire Slayer. How about Vladimir Putin? I didn't make these up. Vladimir Putin. How about Salixalot? Pablo Percaso, or Edward. Scissorpoise. I got a whole list of these. I'll share some more with you next week. Let me go to Eileen and Van Nuys. Hey, Eileen, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing, Warren? I'm doing super. What's up? I was just writing on my mirror in the bathroom your number in a lip pencil so I wouldn't forget it for the DC number. So you wrote your name on your back? No, I wrote... I wrote your phone number on a mirror. In my I, I hope I hope your significant so, other doesn't see it. That's all I'm hoping. Oh, yeah, right. No, that's funny. Oh, my God. Anyhow, I am a person who adopts dogs. I've got a three-year-old little tiny thing that looks like that dog that was in a PetSmart ad, kind of wiry little thing. Yeah. Hair. And I also have one that I adopted about 10 years ago, but I'm always looking at the pound. And I went two days ago, and there was this beautiful, big, huge Doc tail, maybe lab mix, blonde dog that was brought in during the disaster, like the fires. And yeah, all. yeah, yeah. And so I looked at that big dog because we our big dog passed away nine years ago. Um, but no, not even nine, three years ago. And and so I looked at this big dog and I really liked the look. And then so I brought my husband back the next day and I said, "Remember this dog? We saw it months and months ago, and now the owners are giving it up for adoption. They're not coming back for it." So you're gonna adopt it? I'm, de- I'm deciding what to do. Well, what's, the de- like what's the decision? Well, it said on the piece of paper that it, it's a door dasher. So that means it's going to leave. So you it's- train it. You educate it. You teach it right from wrong. You spend time. You get a trainer. Do it yourself. I'll send you a copy of my book. If it runs out of the door, you got to be careful at the beginning, of course, obviously. But the most important thing to understand is just because a dog has a problem doesn't mean it's a problem dog. It means well, it's a dog with a problem. I, it's a dog who misses its owners. That's what. Well, he may miss his owners, but I'm sure from what you're telling me in the five minutes or the two minutes I've been speaking to you, you sound like a really lovely lady. And a couple of hugs and kisses from you, a couple of organic carrots, some special food, a That's nice bed I to think. sleep in, and the dog's going to love being with you. Sure. And he's I, gonna, know. I would I do. Know. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. I met you once, by the way, at the Red Barn. Yeah, when great. Yeah. There. In fact, I'm going to do a commercial for them. As soon as we hang up, I'm doing a commercial for Red Barn. And I, I gave you a little stone with a tiny little wooden cat cut out on it. I handed it to you. It's on my desk. You. It's on oh, my desk. That was from me. <laughs> it's on my desk as we speak. Oh, good. That was Yeah, and thank you for that. So, Eileen, here's what I'm going to do, okay? I got to move on. I'm going to put you on hold. Yep. I'm going to send you a copy. I'm not going to. Suzette will take your name and address. We'll send you a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want. By the way, the book is available on my website if you if you want to purchase it. But I'm going to send you a copy. Bless you. Get this dog in. If you're still having problems, give me a call back. You may have to get a trainer in once or twice to help you with the running out of the door. It's not that difficult. 
difficult a problem to resolve. Take it from me. Many of the dogs I worked with over the years had that escape scenario, the Houdinis. I, I, there's a whole chapter in the book on Houdini dogs, okay? Dogs that escape from anything. But if you make your home so interesting, you make it enjoyable, you make the backyard fascinating like a Disneyland for dogs, they'll have no need to take off. Take it from me. All right, here's the number for the network show because when we come back, I'm going to try to get to Marie. If not, call on the national show. That number is 877-725-8255. But hey, we're back on the page. So my, uh, my, uh, my uh, screener, my producer, Suzette just walked in, and her dog's nickname is Poopy. Anybody else have a Poopy out there? Poopy, the dog. I, I bet you there's other Poopies out there. I don't know if it's spelled the same way, P-O-U, a very French way of spelling Poopy. Usually I would say P-O-O-P, but I'll, I'll take the French way. Hey, we're back on the pet show. Here's the bottom line. Marie, great call. You adopted an older cat. I don't want to go to your phone call right now, and I'll tell you why. I don't want to rush you. I want to spend time with you. So what I'd like you to do is call the network show just in about four or five minutes. I promise if you call, I'll try to make you my first caller on that show. Again, anyone who's out there shopping, driving around, couldn't figure out what question they had, uh, you can call the National Canadian Show. It starts at one o'clock right after. It's on Radio America right after I get off the air here. And uh, again, it's the same type of show. I give away the same items. And uh, at the same time, uh, I'll answer your pet and animal questions. The phone number for the national show, you can start calling at one o'clock, is 877 725 8255. 877 725 8255. One more time, 877 725 8255. Now, you heard a lot of calls today, a lot of the calls coming in from a lot of my listeners that adopted older dogs and cats. And I'm a firm believer that older dogs and cats need homes, as do puppies as well. But older dogs and cats definitely need homes, and they're so much more difficult to find a home for. And people People often say, well, the dog comes with baggage when it comes out of a shelter. Well, it may have certain issues, but it's not baggage. It's not baggage. It's just lack of exposure, lack of socializing, lack of education, and most importantly, it's it's lack of being loved. Once you adopt a dog, pick up a dog off the streets, rescue a feral cat, it doesn't happen overnight. But you're talking to someone who had as many as 32 at a time, all rescues. And once they realize that they're loved, once they realize they're getting food on a regular basis, once they realize they don't have to fight to su survive every single day, they start coming around and little by little. And this is what makes me smile. When you take a dog, like the two chihuahuas I, I had with my arms yesterday, they're a little older. But sometimes if you adopt a 14 or a 13 or a 12, year old dog or even a 17 year old dog or cat by handling them every day by hugging and kissing and showing that you love them little by little they come around so that sad depressed anxious dog or cat that's sitting in the back of a kennel at a shelter shaking there's no need for that if they're socialized properly speaking of shelters by the way coming up on the 20, 20th, I believe, or the 22nd of 20th of this month you go to my website I'm holding that summit there's a shelter in San Bernardino that I've heard horrible things about called the VOR. We're going to have a special on them. If you want more information, go to my website, thepetshow.com, thepetshow.com. It'll tell you where we're going to have the event and how you can help. But right now, I want you guys to stay tuned because coming up here on KRLA is Living Pain Free with Dr. Mark Darrow and my good friend Nita. Until next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you, a special one between the years for me. I'm Warren Eckstein. You've been listening to The Pet Show. Put a little